Hello, and welcome to Philip Brown's Computer Networking Lab. You're watching the instructional video called STP Port Selection. In this video, we will look at the second part of how the spanning tree topology is created. As we saw in the previous video, one of the switches had been elected as the root of the spanning tree. As soon as the root has been elected, all non-root switches begin to decide which of their ports will be root ports, designated ports, and blocking ports. Each non-root switch has only one switch port which leads back to the root switch. This is a list of rules that non-root switches use to choose their one root port. The non-root switch will choose ports from paths leading to the root switch. This just means that the switch must choose ports that are receiving superior BPDUs. If there is more than one port receiving superior BPDUs, then the switch will choose the lowest root path calls, meaning that the switch will add all the spanning tree calls on which the BPDU packet has crossed from the root switch. The cost is based upon the speed of the interfaces by default. If there's a tie, then the switch will choose the lowest bridge ID of the directly connected switch. The first three rules in the list assume that the switch is connected to two or more switches. Rules four and five Assume that the switch is connected to only one switch. When the non-root switch is connected to another switch with multiple links, the non-root switch will choose the lowest port ID of the switch that it is connected to. If there is a tie, then the switch will choose its own lowest port ID. After a switch has chosen its root port, it will block any other port that is receiving superior BPDUs from the root switch if the directly connected switch has a lower bridge ID to prevent a switching loop from forming. Any ports left that are receiving BPDUs will be made into designated ports. And ports that do not receive any BPDUs will be edge ports for end node devices. Let's take a look at some of the terms. The bridge ID is composed of the bridge priority and the MAC address. The network administrator can modify the value of the bridge priority in order to change the spanning tree topology at the switch level. The default value is 32,768. The port ID is composed of the port priority and the interface port number. The network administrator can change the port priority value in order to modify the topology at the port interface level. The default priority is 128. The cost is based on the port speed by default but the value can be modified by the network administrator. The faster the interface transfers data, the lower the cost. For this lab, the default value for fast ethernet is 19, and the default value for the gigabit ethernet is 4. This will change the spanning tree topology at the port interface level. The spanning tree VLAN calls command is used to modify the value of the interface port. The spanning tree VLAN priority command is used to modify the bridge priority value of a switch. The spanning tree VLAN port priority command is used to modify the port priority value of an interface. Now, let's look at some examples 
of how a switch would use spanning tree to choose its one root port. In these examples, we will be looking at the test switch and see how the root port was chosen. Here, we see that the interface 1 on the test switch is green and that the interface 2 is amber, meaning that it's being blocked. Both interface 1 and 2 are receiving BPDUs from the root switch. So the reason that the interface 1 is chosen is based upon a rule further down the list. If a network administrator wanted to make interface 2 the root port, he could modify the bridge priority on the right switch so that it is higher than the bridge priority on the left switch, thus making the right switch the root switch. In this example, the test switch had an equal cause to the root switch on both interfaces. Each fast ethernet link has a cost of 19. 19 plus 19 equals 38. So both paths have a cost of 38. And so the spanning tree topology is being decided by a rule further down the list. We can change the topology by either configuring a lower cost value on the links on the right hand side or changing one of the links on the right to a faster connection rate, such as the gigabit ethernet link. We have modified the cost of the link going from the root switch to the right switch. Now the test switch will choose the right interface as the root port. Let's assume that all the links have equal cost again. The test switch will then use the lowest bridge ID of the switches that is directly connected to in order to decide which interface should be in the root port. Since the left switch has the lower bridge ID, the test switch will choose interface 1 to be the root port. But if we configure the bridge priority on the right switch to be lower than the left switch, then interface 2 will become the root port. The fourth rule on the list assumes that there is only two switches and that they have multiple links connecting them together. The test switch will decide which interface port to make the root port by looking at the switch it is connected to and choosing the port with the lowest port ID. We can choose which port the test switch uses as the root port by lowering the port priority number on the corresponding connecting switch port. The fifth rule is for situations where the BPDUs sent out by the connected switch are the same. The test switch will then use its own lowest port ID. The test switch can choose a new root port by lowering its port priority value. The root port receives the best superior BPDUs from the root. The designated port receives superior BPDUs from the root and higher bridge IDs from the directly connected switch, or it receives inferior BPDUs. The non-designated port receives superior BPDUs from the root and lower bridge IDs from the directly connected switch. The edge port does not receive any BPDUs. We have just saw how non-root switches choose the role of their interface ports in order to create a spanning tree. I hope this video was informative and I thank you for viewing.